Hey guys, welcome to another episode of No Mama, Grow Mama. This is the place where we're going to chat with you about all things related to health and wellness for you and your family, which, as we've said, if you watch the episode before, is pretty much every single topic under the sun. Uh, my name is Jennifer Matthews, and today we are going to be talking again to Trish Unger. Um, if you've seen a previous episode we did, we did an episode with Trish on a alternative... Um, health option for you called BIE. Today we're back talking to Trish again um, about another alternative um, health option uh, that Trish offers in her office. This one I will tell you when I first learned about Body Talk was a little bit more outside of alternative than what I was used to. Um, so I will give you that information before we share with Body Talk <laughs> that for some of you, this might be too much. It is definitely an alternative health option. But I will tell you personally, um, I've had Body Talk done with Trish before. That's what we're talking about today. It's called Body Talk. Um, I've had Body Talk done with Trish before. And my son has also had Body Talk done with Trish before. And some of the things that happens during our body talk sessions are weird and amazing at the same time. So I wanted to share it with you today um, because it can also be used as part of treatment options um, for underlying health conditions and those kinds of things. And I'm sure Trish can fill us in a bit more on that. So Trish, why don't you tell us what is body talk? What is it? What is it used for? Start there. Okay. So, um, okay, so body talk is one of the only modalities or the only one I know of that takes into account the whole mind, body, and spirit. So we take into account um, thoughts, emotions, and belief systems that may be behind some of your health issues. So um, things like acupuncture, um, physiotherapy, even BIE, the other modality that I practice, are very much on the physical side of things um, and that can address so many things obviously we know that we get help from physio and acupuncture and BIE and things like that but sometimes um, issues just won't resolve so for example maybe you have knee pain and you've been doing chiro and physio and osteo and all the things but this persistent knee pain just will not go away um, I have a client who who had this very problem and it's pretty cool I think we did uh, two body talk sessions and her body brought up the, her knees as a priority both times and they were both in relation to a very traumatic event that happened to her um, about eight or ten years ago and so the body gets to tell the story it gets to tell all the details about the story this thing that happened to you and it tells it in a very specific order and we listen to all of that. So we don't just barge in and go body tell me what's the deal with your knees. So her body told me the story about her knees with body talk we listen and we address it and we help the body heal from that and and it does sound too good to be true and it's not always an overnight thing but for her she was unable to um, go for walks anymore even to walk around the block was too painful and she's like mid 40s so this isn't somebody who has you know mobility issues from way back or anything but um, but yeah, now she's walking through the neighborhood, commuting to work and stuff, and she has such a huge relief in her knees because her body got to tell about I keep doing that, get to tell <laughs> the knee. about the trauma yeah. uh, where her emotions or belief systems got lodged. And until those thoughts, belief systems, emotions are addressed, the body cannot fully heal and let it go. Yep. Yeah, it was very interesting watching my son's treatment with body talk. Um, my treatment with body talk was very, very messy. Um, when I had mine done, there was a lot of crying and it was unexpected crying as things. And it wasn't me crying because I was sad. It was releasing. Um, I know somebody else who's had body talk who said they felt something lifted off of them physically during their body talk session. And they walked out feeling like they were very light and you know, walking on a cloud kind of idea. So um, definitely it's an alternative and it's a far alternative. But why I wanted to share this with you today again is because we've seen results with it. Um, and I just want you to know that it exists. If you're kind of stuck and are looking for something new to try with your health, um, this is a great 
option for you to kind of look at. Um, what is body talk not going to be able to do for someone? Um, just like BIE, it is not a quick fix. So you may have multiple layers upon layers of um, belief systems, say, or emotions that are behind, um, in my own case, my migraine. So I've suffered migraines my whole life. And last year um, was a debilitating year with migraines. And there's multiple belief systems that are behind that. And as those are being addressed through BIE, through more than one session it might be a thing many people um, come like once a month or every six or eight weeks or so slowly those layers just like layers of an onion are peeled away and and your symptoms can shift because as with BIE this is a modality that helps your body heal itself but because we are listening to the body we're asking specific questions in a specific order the body can heal itself in the way that it wants to heal needs to um, is there, who, who is body talk ideal for? Is it for all ages, certain ages, certain levels of sickness? Who, who can body talk help? Anyone. So we can work on babies. I worked on a baby who was only a couple weeks old. Um, right, any age. So the more ill you are, it's possible that it would take more sessions and it's not even a thing that I, I wouldn't want people to think like oh I go to body talk and then I'm going to be fixed it's like a maintenance thing for me I go every six weeks or so just like I would go for a massage I am slowly uncovering and peeling away the layers of the onion and feeling more and more energy fewer of my uh, symptoms like migraines and digestive stuff um, yeah, you can totally work on any, uh, any age. It can be acute issues or chronic issues. Acute being, I have a couple clients with concussions um, and that's been pretty cool. So um, concussions, you'd be seeing all your different therapists for that, but what if the trauma of the thing that gave you the concussion is also lodged in your brain? So it may not fully heal and you may have post-concussion syndrome for years what if through body talk we could, um, the body would reveal the trauma of just before you got hit by the car or just, you know, just after the ball hit your head or whatever the thing is that, that happened to you. So if the body can tell that story, is it possible it can heal so much faster and more thoroughly? So is it basically, if you were to put it in a very simplistic term, are you basically with this story? treatment option are you basically giving the body a voice and allowing to talk and tell its story so it can let it go a hundred percent that is what it does okay yeah so I it's like therapy it's... but for your body that wouldn't normally have a voice yeah and the cool thing um and i'm not anti-therapy mm -hmm. at all but we don't need to sometimes we don't even need to name the trauma some people have some pretty horrible horrible things and maybe they've buried it in their subconscious something that happened when they were seven we don't even need to talk about it the body will reveal there was an event that happened when you were seven years old um it was at school and that's all the details the body will give us just needs to get rid of that yep even though you or i might not know all the details of that we don't need to the body is like this thing happened i always do this it's like mm -hmm. i'm not digging for answers the body is revealing the answers um bringing it forward yeah like one thing we say is like your body is putting all the garbage at the curb and i'm just coming along and collecting the garbage in right getting rid of take it. take it away very, very interesting. Um, is there a standard length of treatment time for body talk? So you said um, some people think of it like a massage appointment where you would come back every six weeks or so. Is there times that would indicate like a quick fix where we're going to like, maybe somebody only needs to see you for three or four months or is it standard that if there was a lot of issues, it might take a few years is there a standard length of time for that or it kind of depends on the person or really just shift your mind to think of it as just it's something else you're going to do for yourself? Well, the on one thing basis. that I love a lot of things about body talk, but one thing I very much love about it is it's all based, it's all priority based and we use um, this giant chart and it's this formula we build and built into that is permission. So you may 
consciously be coming to me like, yeah, I'm ready to be healed, but subconsciously your body might not be ready to. And there's ways that we can work around that and see if we can get around that. If your body won't let us, I don't work on you that day. Likewise, at the end. <laughs> I'm just thinking back to one of the treatments that I had, one of the things we worked on for myself. <laughs> yes. But your body let you, right? My body let me. My mind did not want to let me. So one of the, I will be open and honest with you, one of the treatments that um, I did with Trish for Body Talk was about my, and I don't know if Trish remembers this or not, was about my fear of trusting people. Um, and funny enough, I just posted about this on social media the other day. Um, I've always wanted to trust people, but I have a really hard time. I just, for whatever reason, something was inside of me. I just don't trust people. I just rather do it myself. Don't let people in close to me because then people will hurt you. Those kinds of things. And being in business and a business for which I love on people all the time with our classes and those kinds of things, it's been really hard to figure out how to make all of that work. So this came up in body talk and my body said, um, Hey, I want to give this to you. I don't like that. You don't, that we don't trust people and that we don't let people close. We're going to let this go. And that was one of the times where I was crying because physically I did not want to let that go. And my conscious self did not want to let that go, but my body did. Um, so that was a really, really messy, messy session. And at the end I told Trish, I was mad when she was doing <laughs> the treatment and she was fixing it. I was mad because I consciously did not want to fix that. And then there was a point when she was doing the work at the end where I just felt it like whoosh, go and it was gone. So yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. The whole point of it is really those like that, such an emotional charge you had to that and body talk is meant to like put a wet blanket on that emotional charge, like get rid of the emotional mm -hmm. charge. So it's just like a passive memory and just, oh, whatever. I used to think that. Yeah. And interestingly enough, since having that um, treatment session, my husband and I's world with friends and um, going to a new church and bigger and the people that we surround ourselves now with has just blown up and cool. it's been amazing. So yeah, yeah. yeah it was a really cool thing. Good. Really cool thing. Yeah. And I wanted to just go back to when you had the question about how often would people come. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's built into every session at the end, it's all very polite and respectful of the body. So when this session is fully complete, we ask um, further body talk, yes or no. Okay, so let's show what a body talk, just a really quick overview of what a body talk session would look like. Okay, Trish. sounds good. So, um, so you just lay there and hang out. You're very comfortable. I do my testing with my hands on your arm right here. So I'm just putting a uh, light pressure against your wrist. And if you can just kind of um, like, yeah, hang out a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, um, so I'm just, you can see, I'm just putting pressure. Um, when it's a no, there's no movement. When it's a yes, her arm will be kind of floppy. So it's kind of like BIE, just a different testing. That's right. Yeah. And all the questions I'm asking are yes and no questions. Cause obviously I can't say, Hey, so tell me the story about, so it's all yes and no okay. questions. Okay. So this is a no, this is a yes. Okay. So, so permissions are not a priority. So I just, I'll do this part out loud. So sections, section one. So, um, I know you can't see my chart here, but um, we are led exactly to where we need to be. Section one. Okay, so the first thing we got to is called cortices. Um, and we have uh, these different lobes in our brain and cortices helps to um, improve communication between the left and right brain. This helps um, with mental clarity and calming the body right the heck down. Calming the body. Yes. Trish. Calming the body. Yes. And cortices is actually like the cornerstone maneuver of body talk. So this is the first thing that comes up for you. Cortices. And now we can get some details on that. Okay. Okay, so um, I just have to write these down. So 
with the cortices, they need to be balanced. So balancing that left, right um, hemispheres, the details we are getting are about emotions. I don't have any emotions. Yes. We'll see. For people we'll see who know that me, is true. oh my goodness, emotions. <laughs> so we have the emotion of worry. Mm. Okay. Tamu, emotions? Tamu, when you're watching this, worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no further emotions. Okay, so now we're going to link this cortices. Your body wants to reveal some other part of the formula. Link. Okay, um, one. Okay, so. Okay, we're linking to an organ. Okay, lung, heart, liver, gallbladder, stomach, spleen. Spleen. Okay. Okay, so we're linking that to something about your spleen, which um, is about filtering blood. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have the rest of the <laughs> physiology memorized. I could look it up, but uh, let's just go with this. Okay, so spleen. Okay, so we're going to go into the details and right now we're getting some external influences that are affecting the functioning of your spleen. Okay. Okay, so it's an activity. An activity you do at home uh, versus at work. Drinking wine? Uh, Nope. Okay. <laughs> Good guess. I'm lost. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so an activity. Um, so usually I start narrowing it down. Like, is the activity scheduled? No. Um, is it something you do daily? Yes. Is it something that would be considered um, a chore? Okay, yes. So is it something to do with meal times? I find that a very common one with mums. Okay. <laughs> meal times, further more specific. Is it. Is it actually eating meals? Is it actually Preparing. meal prep? Yeah, meal because prep. Because of my children and their allergies? Yeah, it's meal prep. <laughs> okay, and do we have further details on meal prep? No. So you might, so you just said like because of your kids um, and all their allergies and your body didn't need to name that out loud. That might be exactly what we're holding space for. We don't know, but it doesn't matter. Like we have whatever meal prep encompasses is being addressed right now okay so further okay so we have some internal influences now so emotions okay, <laughs> okay so the emotions yes. okay we have worry again okay it's worry but worry is not quite the right word um, usually at this point I have to Google. Anticipation? <laughs> um, nope. Yeah, we're thinking of, um, we need our thesaurus right now. So let's see, worry, um, anxiety. Um, uh, anticipation? Anticipation, nope. Um, uneasiness. Mm. Okay. So uneasiness surrounding meal prep that is affecting the functioning of your spleen in some way. So like what other modality knows there's uneasiness in your spleen? And do we care? I kind of do. I'd like my spleen to work really, really well. Right. So if it's storing some kind of like grumpiness or something, I would like that to get it out of there. Away. Yes. Okay, so okay, so there's a link here. So linking cortices to spleen and now to um, link in organs. So we got a link in one of the body parts. Okay. Something in the brain. Okay. So um, in the cortex, limbic, limbic brain, and our limbic brain is totally about emotions. Like it's like a storage center of emotions. So let's see. Uh, 
Okay, so about seven years ago, and usually I ask, does anything jump out for you? Or I, we can keep asking questions. Related to We don't food? know yet, but oh. nope, not necessarily. So I can just get a little bit more detail for us. Yeah. Okay, so about seven years ago, an event, okay, were you by yourself? No, with others. Was it an event that happened with friends, family members? Okay, family members. In a vehicle? Um, was it in a vehicle? Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, further details. Okay, were you in an accident or had an argument or some kind of something? something? No, the only thing I can think is um, my son, it was a scary incident. He had a amber knuckles on and he broke it you told me that yeah and he was choking on one of the beads and we didn't know he was choking because he could still breathe we only realized a few hours later when he couldn't swallow Whoa. Yeah. okay so this story so it was that jen that just time. told is this the is this the event we're talking about that's affecting your mid limbic brain okay further details okay that's totally it okay so that event Sun swallowed piece of amber. So a thing like that, like that's traumatic. And oh, we, I know I've held on to that. Yes. Yeah. And oftentimes we think that we've healed from a thing because mm -hmm. we just don't think about it anymore. But really, I think often if it wasn't fully dealt with and what does that even mean, yeah. it just goes deep. Yep. And so now it's affecting, it's doing something in your mid-limbic brain. Mm -hmm. And maybe you developed a belief system that day of safety I do. or something, right? No, I developed a belief system that part of his allergies that he carries with him today is because of that incident. Because right. I don't know if he didn't swallow a piece that's stuck in his body that's causing him to react. Yeah. That's what I carry with me yes. from that incident. Yes. Yeah. However, we did test Amber on yes, her, did. didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. But still, but it's still, a belief system to yes. hold on to because what if it was wrong? Yes, yeah. I know. Okay, okay, so we have an emotion here. Okay, so fear. Can you further in fear? Yes, so not exactly fear. We need another word for fear. Does anything jump out at you or I'm Googling? Relating to this event? Yep. Well, what I just said. The fear that there's still a piece in his body that's causing... Oh, I mean more like a synonym for fear. Like, so fear isn't exactly the word. We need another word for fear. So I'll go through this um, list here. Panic. So I think this is more about... Um, this is about the actual event, I think. Oh, what so we're finding. because so we couldn't get it up. Yeah, so it's so the we swallowing. Tried to tip him over. We tried to tip him over and get it up when we realized he couldn't swallow. And then we were going to take him to the hospital when he coughed it up in the car. Yes, yes. But he was, he was still breathing. He wasn't choking. He just wasn't able to swallow food. Right. Hmm. Yes. So was that panic of how do you get something like that up? Well, panic, I think this is literally about him swallowing that piece of mm -hmm. amber and your emotion that happened right then. So not even all the other stuff about the food or if it's part of the allergies or anything. I think we're literally just in the moment of... Him, you realizing he swallowed that mm. thing. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Okay, so this session, um, we've, your body has highlighted all the pieces it wants to address today. Um, and so now what do we do with that? The story's been told, now your body is ready to address it and like... Release it. Yeah, release it, um, kind of break that emotional charge related to these events and so often they seem totally unrelated so we had something about worry that's in your cortices linked to your spleen about meal prep it's like hey where did that come from mm -hmm. and now that's linked to um this thing that happened to your son so sometimes it does not make sense and it is very hard for me to not try make sense of it but mm -hmm. that's not my job your body knows what it's doing right. and i'm just gonna do what facilitate it the process yes okay so then we have implementation tap out so we're gonna tap out cortices okay perfect okay so we'll show what this um 
what the cortices looks like. So now um, your body has specified that it wants to work with the cortices part of the formula today, um, but the whole entire formula will be addressed, even if we're only doing kind of the first part of the link. So we're gonna have you um, just put your hand over your spleen here. So we're linking cortices to spleen. Um, we, the limbic brain stuff will totally get addressed throughout this tapping out here. So I'm just gonna put my hand behind your head. Okay, so I am contacting each part of the, the cortex, the cortices. You are linking spleen. In body talk, we always tap the head, heart, and belly. Those are the three brains. Um, so you're just gonna take some ni nice deep breaths. You don't have to do anything else. So tapping the head brain facilitates the changes. The heart brain stores the memory of the changes. And the enteric brain or gut brain um, that helps us digest or assimilate the changes. Okay, and I'm just gonna move my hand up one position here and keep doing that nice deep breathing. Most people um, will just feel pretty relaxed through this. Sometimes people will have- I'm very tired. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sometimes people start yawning. We get a lot of belly gurgles and I take that totally as the belly is just the body's like, yes, that thing, that thing right there. <laughs> it's like it. validating it. Yeah. Sometimes people will cry. Um, I remember once your son, the cutest yeah. thing in the world, he's like, my eye is leaking a little yeah. bit. And he wasn't like, he wasn't crying, but it's like just this. No, yeah, release. it's happening right now with me. Yeah. 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 And so breath is, as we know, in so many places, breath is very, very important to this technique. Breath helps move the emotions. And emotions through body talk are either moved out of the body or they're just changed into a more useful version of the emotion. Like we might think of, say, the emotion of anger as just being negative, but anger in its positive form motivates us mm -hmm. it helps us get stuff done make decisions so so we aren't always moving the emotions out but we are at the very least we're changing them so they're useful and you can take action this part and actually what i'm contacting here is your li your limbic brain anyway so we're actually getting all the parts of the formula but it wouldn't matter if we weren't tapping limbic brain, we're getting it all. The tapping is very relaxing for most people. Some people, one of my kids cannot be tapped. He loses his mind. So um, we can actually tap energetically above the body too. Really? Yeah. Some people just cannot have their belly touch. Like mm -hmm. they, so we can accommodate all of those mm -hmm. things. Okay, so now we're just going to make sure that that formula is finished. So, um, yep, so no, no uh, further body talk is required today. And then, so, <laughs> that was a big yes. yes. Okay, so that's yes for future body talk. Okay, so about four weeks. And then to be polite, we always say practitioner preference. No, so that does mean you can come, come back, back to me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so the aftercare with this, lots of times people feel super mellow. Um, some people, depending on what, things we worked on have to pee like crazy for the next few days. Um, I have some people who poop like crazy the next few days, which is awesome because your body is literally getting rid of the crap it doesn't need to hold on to anymore. Right. So right. thank your body. <laughs> Get rid of See it. See you later. Um, so yeah, and some people may feel like a little off potentially, but that's like any modality where you're um, kind of 
I don't want to really say rearranging things, but you're just addressing things that the body's been holding on to and now it's releasing them. There's going to be, there can be a little feeling of like almost disorientation or something. It's not like you'd have to take a day off work mm -hmm. or anything. You just might feel a little like, oh man. Something's okay. different. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I know when my son first did his, he slept for 12 hours oh. that night. We had to take him into school late the next day because he had a big sleep when he was all done his. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So it's the body's way of healing, I guess. Yes. Um, if you were to leave people, so we always wrap up the end of the show with two things. If they could remember two things that are important um, about body talk, what would those two things be that you would want them to know or remember? Um, I think understanding or maybe it's too hard to understand because it really goes into quantum physics which mm -hmm. I just barely understand but the idea that our thoughts and emotions create our reality and we can have good thoughts and emotions or we can have negative ones we can have belief systems that of self-sabotage or something like that so just knowing that uh our bodies are far more complex than we believe and that thoughts and emotions, belief systems, these things that are coming from outside our body are affecting our body. Our environment affects our body. So if you've been doing all the things, all the modalities trying to figure out um, why you keep getting migraines or why your digestion just will not kind of settle down, it's possible that there's something that can be addressed from this talk. angle mm -hmm. and I only have have been doing it for just over a year and I've taken um, two giant courses by now but there's still about seven more giant courses I can take so it can go into way huger things than than what I can do mm -hmm. but you can absolutely address um, well just a ton Everything. of stuff with this yes yeah. okay perfect and what yeah. would the second thing be I would say uh, again not a quick fix. Right. So think of this as maintenance. Think of this as letting, it's like counseling for your body where you don't need to go back into victimhood and like relive that day with your son, mm -hmm. right? We brought it up and you might think about it for the next few days, but it's not like bringing up all of the horror of that moment. So it's like a lot of people say, oh my God, that was like a counseling session without having to talk about right. all the things and yep. like go back there and like feel all the feels because that that works for some people but for others it keeps them there it keeps right. them in the trauma and they walk around in their life with that every day right. so this just get it, it, it out, out layer right. by layer by layer so there's often not just one like say for your I'm spleen sure for everyone yes. we are complicated people who mm -hmm. carry things with us through our whole life from our own childhood to things as we're an adult to things before we were here right absolutely like fetal life and birth are even built into this and stuff for my own body talk sessions has come up in my own life uh as a fetus like stuff that my mom and dad were going through has mm -hmm. affected who i am today that is the same with everybody right so if there's any kind of emotional stuff or traumas back then like we carry that and how do we know that's not why we still have eczema or we always have back pain mm -hmm. or whatever because people are complicated disease. yeah yes. people are complicated perfect well awesome this was great hopefully you guys got some interesting information from this um, again this is trish uh we'll put her contact information in uh and her website in <clears throat> the post for this uh video so you can check out more of her website if you're interested in learning more about body talk um thanks for joining us today hopefully you took a few things away from this episode we'll see you next time see ya Pickles us a baby!